even when I'm feeling you're working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Would you guys pray with me? God, we just thank you for being our way maker. God, we thank you for for that. We thank you that uh, we don't have to be at church. We can be online doing church. We can be at our homes. We can be uh, wherever we are, God, and you're with us. You are that light in the darkness, God. Um, even through this uh, pandemic, God, you are the light. You are working. We may not be able to see you, God, um, and that's okay because we know you're working. Um, we love you, God. Um, in your name we pray, amen. darkness tries to roll over my bones, when sorrow comes to steal the joy I own, when brokenness and pain is all I know, oh, I won't be shaken, oh, I won't be shaken, because my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Will shame no longer has a place to hide? And I am not the captive to the lies. I'm not afraid to leave my past behind. Oh, I won't be shaken. No, I won't be shaken. Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. There's power that can break off every chain. There's power that can this resurrection power that can say is power in your name, power in your name. This power that can break off every chain. This power that can empty out a grave. This resurrection power that can say is power in your name, power in your name. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear. Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Oh, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear. 
doesn't stand a chance in my standing your love. Excellent. Well, thank you, Dresden family, for leading us in worship. You're going to continue, I know, in just a few minutes. Um, wonderful that we can continue to gather together <clears throat> in such a way as this uh, in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, just want a few announcements for you. Number one, as we will continue to uh, encourage or share each week uh, as we gather, if you are in need, uh, if you're in need of food or someone to run groceries or, uh, or just someone to talk to, uh, feel free. Uh, give us a, uh, let us know. Let your small group leader know, uh, myself any of the pastoral staff or the elders, uh, we'd be honored and blessed to be able to serve you and encourage you uh, during these times. We know they are difficult uh, and we are trusting that God is getting the glory in and through each and every one of us uh, through this whole uh, time of season of life that we're going through. Uh, a couple of announcements for, a few announcements actually for the time ahead. First of all, uh, I wanna make sure that you uh, are planning accordingly. Next Sunday, April the 26th, we are going to have communion in our homes. And so that might require you prepare just a little bit before the Sunday morning service. Uh, so find some grape juice or juice of some sort and a cracker, a wafer, or maybe you choose to make some bread this week in, in preparation for a special communion time as we gather in our homes for this communion service next Sunday, April the 26th. So we just want to be, have you prepared for for that. Um, also, last week I introduced the idea of a 555. That's uh, five days out of the week, taking five minutes and reaching out to five people. And vary it up day by day as the Lord leads you. And, and to, uh, I, I don't know about you, but I hope you were as encouraged as I was this week as I reached out to various people. Um, uh, ironically, the five minutes maybe went a little longer in some cases, uh, but it was absolutely sensational to be able just to talk and share and to pray with one another and to, to be an encouragement to others. And so I just wanna encourage you. Uh, I know a number of you uh, took me up on that, that opportunity. Uh, and so maybe starting tomorrow or even today, five, 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 five minutes, five people for five days and uh, see how God will orchestrate some incredible things as you build your relationships and encourage one another. Uh, as always, we uh, Tuesday nights from six to 6.30, uh, we are having our prayer time, our virtual prayer time. Stay posted to Realm, and we'll send the link out each Monday or Tuesday for the Tuesday at 6 p.m. prayer time. Uh, we have a great number of people on there. It's just been an encouragement to see one another, uh, to hear prayer requests, and to pray over one another on our, on our various prayers. So we invite uh, individuals, couples, families, join us for this uh, special time of, of, of prayer. Uh, after the service today, we're going to have a community connection time for five or so minutes. Uh, after the benediction song today. So uh, if you're, if you're uh, following us on YouTube, if you're watching on our YouTube channel, uh, we're going to give a little time for you to transition off of YouTube at the end of the service. And so we'll keep Zoom going. So you'll just want to click on the Zoom link and you'll be able to join us and say hi to uh, our friends and church family uh, on the Zoom uh, connection on the link there. Something special we're going to be doing next Sunday at the end of the service. So we want kids to have a special attention to this. Next Sunday, uh, we're gonna have a special Quest Kids connector time. Quest Kids, uh, at the end of the service, stay tuned for information coming out about that. Uh, but just for a few minutes after the service, next Sunday, April 26th, uh, our Quest Kids are gonna be able to connect uh, with some of their leaders and each other, uh, have a little bit of fun uh, at the end of the service. So make sure to put that on your calendar to remember that. Uh, certainly, I'm very thankful for how God continues to provide for this ministry. Uh, there are a couple things that are on our radar. Certainly, our, our uh, expenses continue to go on as a ministry. We also anticipate some increased uh, needs uh, in, our, um, in our body in the time ahead. So if, you would, uh, if God has blessed you above and beyond, you would like to give a, a little bit above and beyond, uh, we would invite you to do that as the Lord leads. You could do that through general giving or through uh, the Benevolence account uh, online, or you can make a check out, in, a special check for Benevolence. Um, make it out to Timberline, just put Benevolence in the memo. Again, we do anticipate the time ahead, and we wanna be ahead of that as much as we can. 
uh, to be able to help answer needs of those in our community uh, that may have needs in the time ahead. If you need help uh, giving online, feel free to reach out to Connie Bixman on Realm. She'd be glad to, to help, or you can send your check uh, to the church uh, right here at uh, 4459 121st Street, Timberline uh, in Urbandale. So we thank you for your faithful giving. Uh, we could not do this ministry uh, without your faithful giving to continue to move the gospel ministry forward. Uh, something that we want you to be prepared for this morning, you probably already are, uh, but uh, if you don't have your Bibles near you, uh, this morning during our scripture reading, uh, in a few moments, uh, when Kim leads us in scripture reading, uh, you'll notice something that is consistent behind each of the 26 verses. The last half of each of the 26 verses are the exact same words, and it's actually a congregational response or a form of a hymn. Uh, in that psalm. And so we're going to invite each one of you, wherever you are, to have your Bibles ready to Psalm 136. That's Psalm 136. And, uh, and, and the last half of each verse, we invite you right where you're at uh, as a congregational response to read along with Kim uh, the scripture reading this morning. Uh, before we transition back to worship and music, I read this morning, actually, Psalm 138. I just thought I'd I'd share these couple of verses with you because uh, it was such an encouragement to me. The Psalm of David in Psalm 138, it says, I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and I give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. On the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul, you increased. What a beautiful, beautiful promise that David penned there in Psalm 138. God's steadfast love and faithfulness are very much on display, and he builds us up. He gives us strength in our inner being uh, as we call out to him. So as we continue in the time of worship, let's transition back over uh, to Randy and his a wonderful family, and uh, they're going to lead us in a song called No Longer Slaves. <laughs> you unravel me with a melody, you surround me with the song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. And I'm no longer a slave. I am a child of God, and I'm no longer a slave to fear, for I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Your love has called my name. And I've been born again into your family. Oh, your blood flows through my veins. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. For I am a child. I'm no longer a slave to fear, for I am a child of God. And I'm no longer a slave to fear, for I am a child of God. And I'm no longer a slave. 
scripture or pastoral prayer actually right now would you pray with me father we thank you for those those words that we are no longer slaves to fear mm -hmm. father uh, for you are with us lord your spirit indwells us and we live by your strength and your guidance father we thank you Lord, for who you are and that you are good. Father, you don't need to be reminded of your incredible attributes, your omnipresence, your omniscience, uh, Lord. You don't need to be reminded because you know who you are. But Father, we need to remind ourselves as your creation of how good you are. And Father, in times like these where we're, we're stuck uh, primarily in our homes, uh, Lord, and and uh, away from um, many that we love, Father, we are, help us to find, Lord, our comfort, always our comfort and our peace and our joy first and foremost in you. And Lord, I pray, Lord, this morning as we gather in our homes, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts this morning, however, wherever we are at. Father, I pray this morning, for those that are struggling deeply with, with anxiety or depression or fear or loneliness. Lord, uh, Lord, I pray for those that may have experienced loss as of recent, Lord, and they're wrestling through the emotions, the very real emotions of, of grief. Uh, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would comfort each of those. Let your hand of peace be upon each and every one, we pray, Father. Lord, we lift up this morning many who continue to serve in the midst of the coronavirus. Lord, you know exactly who they are, those who are faithful to serve, that food might be available in our grocery stores. Father, that other things that help us to sustain, Lord, the, the, they serve and they serve faithfully and well. Lord, we pray this morning for hospitals, the doctors, and, and the nurses. We think of Paula Waynell, Lord, one of our own as a nurse who she is faithfully serving. Father, continuing to serve as a nurse, Lord, amidst the coronavirus. Lord, we pray for a hedge of protection around her. Let your peace be upon her in these uh, troublesome times. And Father, protect her and guide her. Lord, as we pray that, we pray for all the staff of these hospitals and these clinics and Lord, just protect them and guide them. Give them the strength to continue on serving those that are hurting, those that are suffering, those that are struggling, that have the coronavirus. Lord, bless them, keep them, be with them, we pray. Today, Father, Lord, as we, as we gather and as, as another week goes by and we look for another week ahead, 
Lord, we pray that you would put a, a stop to this virus, Lord, that a, that a vaccine would be found faster than we could imagine, Lord, that an answer uh, to this could be found, Lord, that would stop this, uh, the spread of this virus. Lord, in the meanwhile, Lord, we know, uh, Lord, you will always get your glory in every situation. And so, Lord, help us to rest in the fact that you have not lost control. Lord, let us rest in the fact, Lord, of who you are and your steadfast love for each and every one of us. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you bring glory to yourself today as we hear your scripture and we hear your scripture proclaimed and we worship you in spirit and truth. These things we ask in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's transition over now to, to Kim Boughton as he leads us in a congregational scripture reading through Psalm 136. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who by understanding made the heavens, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who spread out the earth above the waters, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who made the great lights, for his steadfast love endures forever. The sun to rule over the day, for his steadfast love endures forever. The moon and stars to rule over the night, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, for his steadfast love endures forever. And brought Israel out from among them, for his steadfast love endures forever. With a strong hand and an outstretched arm, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea in two, for his steadfast love endures forever. And made Israel pass through the midst of it, for his steadfast love endures forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who struck down great kings, for his steadfast love endures forever, and killed mighty kings, for his steadfast love endures forever. Sion, king of the Amorites, for his steadfast love endures forever, and Og, king of Bashan, for his steadfast love endures forever, and gave their land as a heritage for his steadfast love endures forever. A heritage to Israel, his servant, for his steadfast love endures forever. It is he who remembered us in our low estate, for his steadfast love endures forever, and rescued us from our foes, for his steadfast love endures forever. He who gives food to all flesh, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven, for his steadfast love endures forever. This is the word of God. Praise God. Well, good morning to everyone. I think that, I think that we're working here. <laughs> All right. Well, I, uh, I'm. This is this is a weird setting. I'm s sitting in my home at my dining dining room table and looking outside at um, at my lawn, which <laughs> is strange. And um, I, as a preacher, it's it's strange to um, not have a congregation to to speak the word of God directly to face to face. Um, but I know that the, the power of God's word goes beyond anything 
um, that we're going through, any of our circumstances. And um, I'm very confident that um, he's going to speak a powerful word over us today. Last night, I uh, happened to flip on the TV and there was on uh, almost every one of the local TV stations, um, this unity, uh, we're in this together um, concert show type of thing that had a bunch of late night uh, talk show hosts and um, a bunch of celebrities singing songs and things like that. And um, for the most part, it was kind of um, uh, off-putting. Um, but there was... <laughs> But the, there was a uh, uh, one point in the in the program where Keith Urban sang a song called "Higher Love," which was written by Steve Winwood uh, in in the seventies, late seventies, I think. Um, and the words of this song kind of struck me, and I think this the words of this song really um, exposes the the heart and, and the yearning that I think mankind has um, for love. And the words to the song go like this. Think about it. There must be a higher love, down in the heart or hidden in the stars above. Without it, life is wasted time. Look inside your heart, I'll look inside mine. Things look so bad everywhere in this whole wor world, what is fair? We walk blind and we try to see, falling behind in what could be. Worlds are turning and we're just hanging on, facing our fear and standing out there alone, a yearning and it's real to me. There must be someone who's feeling for me. Bring me a higher love. Bring me a higher love. Bring me a higher love. Where's that higher love I keep thinking of? And isn't that exactly what the world is, is crying out for, what we all are crying out for in our hearts? A yearning in mankind to love and to be loved, and not just a superficial love, but something that goes deeper, a love that is sacrificial, a love that is boundless, a love that endures no matter what, a love that is for you and for me and for everyone in the world. And the problem with the program last night and the problem with the world is the world is looking in all of the wrong places for that love. And today we're gonna see in Psalm 136, maybe some of us for the first time, that there is a steadfast love that endures forever, a love that will not and cannot fail us. The yearning of our hearts for love can only be fulfilled and satisfied by the love of God. And we're going to see in Psalm 136 that God's steadfast love goes far beyond what we might expect. So before we get into the text, let's just talk a little bit of context. And there's a few things I want us to remember when we read, study, and recite the Psalms. First, we are joining in nearly 3,000 years of people who worship God singing these very words. Now, they were originally sung in Hebrew and then in Greek, and our translations are not identical, but the themes of the Psalms remain the same. There is only one God one creator, ruler of all. He's perfect and he's complete. His goodness, justice, and mercy lack nothing. His power and faithfulness are sure. His word and promises will not be broken and his love for mankind never ends. Mankind has fallen from the dignity and purpose that God gave us at creation. All people since the fall are slaves to sin and death, and the only hope of mankind is in God's saving, saving grace. God chose a people for himself. God committed himself to Israel by making an everlasting, unbreakable covenant to bless, save, and redeem them. God will deliver his people from the hand of their enemies. God will exalt his anointed. God has a glorious future in store for his people. The future of God's people rests on the promise of David's heir, the Messiah, a final king who would save his people and bring light to the Gentiles. All of these themes we can find throughout the Psalter, and many of these very themes show up in the psalm that we're studying this morning. 
And I think it's appropriate. And why, why, why I chose this psalm and why we're, we're preaching it today is I think it speaks so much truth into our uncertain times. And in times like these, we can find consolation. We can find peace and we can find comfort in the truths about God that Psalm 136 declares. Another thing that I want us to remember as we read any psalm, and especially Psalm 136, is that after the resurrection and the ascension of Christ, the New Testament believers understood that the entirety of the Old Testament was pointing to Jesus and was fulfilled by him. First century Christians interpreted the Psalms as messianic promise and fulfillment. So for us today to study the Psalms and not see Christ in them is to miss the point of the Psalter entirely. Psalm 136 is the fifth of five books that the Psalter is divided into. And the primary theme of book five is God's presence with his people. Now, Psalm 135 and Psalm 136 work hand in hand. Many scholars agree that they are partners in praise, and there's a lot of similarities between the two psalms. Psalm 136 has a striking structure, and maybe you noticed as Kim was reading, um, and, and, and you can find the theme or the, the big idea of this psalm. It's the repeated phrase, the refrain, the chorus. The steadfast love of God endures forever. It appears 26 times in every single verse of this passage. A literal translation of the phrase could be, for all time is the Lord's hesed. Hesed has been described as a free-flowing love that knows no bounds. And I love that description, a free-flowing love that knows no bounds. I think that's the kind of love that Steve Winwood was looking for when he wrote Higher Love. The structure of this psalm indicates that it was used in corporate worship as a call and response, where the leader would recite the first part of the verse and the congregation would respond with the chorus, which is why we did the scripture reading the way that we did it today. Psalm 136 begins and ends with the command to give thanks to God. The chorus in each verse gives the primary reason for giving thanks, which is that God's steadfast love endures forever. And then the beginnings of each verse gives the evidence that proves why God's steadfast love endures forever. So let's hold on to some of that context and let's get into our text this morning. Uh, let me pray before we dive in. Father, we, we ask you that as we read your word, um, the power of your Holy Spirit and the power of your word will work, work in tandem um, to affect us in our hearts and minds to believe in you more, to trust in you and to love you, to receive the steadfast love that you've poured out for us and for all of your people throughout history. And to take what you've done in the past to bring it into the present powerfully so that we can trust even now through really uncertain, really difficult times in our lives, that you will continue to be faithful now and in the future. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's take a look at Psalm 136 verses 1 through 3. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords for his steadfast love endures forever. In both Psalm 135 and 136, the first character of God that is highlighted is his goodness. And I think it would be really easy to overlook God's goodness because we know he's good. Okay, he's good, great, and we move on. But I want to stop and reflect because God's goodness is absolutely central to his person. He doesn't just do good things, but the very essence of who God is, is good. And this is important because if God was only considered good because of the good things he did, it might leave room for error. But his being is perfectly good, regardless of his works. And his good works are a result of his perfect goodness. So there's no evil in him. 
not even the possibility of evil or wrong. Everything he is and everything he does is good always without fail. So first and foremost, we must trust, understand, and believe in God's goodness. If our faith is grounded in his goodness, then our circumstances, like a worldwide pandemic, cannot undermine his goodness. The world panics when terrible things happen because they can't make sense of why these things are happening. And we as Christians are tempted to respond the same way. Many of us might have found ourselves panicking at this time. But what we can find our consolation and our peace in is that no matter how bad things are in this world, God is still good. And his purposes for his people are still good. And the truth that this psalm, even in the first verse is speaking over us, is that God in all of his goodness has steadfast love for us that endures forever. Verse 2 says to give thanks to the God of gods for his steadfast love endures forever. And Psalm 135 digs into this theme even more. And so I want to pull a little bit from Psalm 135. And it says that there's no God besides the Lord. The idols of the nations are made by human hands. They have mouths, but they can't speak. They have eyes, but they can't see. They have ears, but they can't hear. What have the false gods done for the people who worship them compared to what God has done for his people? When God did many signs and wonders in Egypt, the false gods of Egypt were powerless. When God struck down the firstborn of Egypt, what did the false gods do to stop him? When God parted the Red Sea, allowing his people to pass through, but the sea swallowed up Pharaoh and his army, what did Pharaoh's God do to protect him? There is only one God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, the great I Am. There is no one above him, no power greater than him. And the truth that this psalm speaks over us today is that the one true God in all of his might, in all of his power, in all of his glory has steadfast love for us that endures forever. Verse 3 says that he is the Lord of lords. There has never been a king who ruled above God. The kings of the nations could not withstand when the Lord came against them. Which of the kings in the land of Canaan stood against God and prevailed? What worldly powers throughout history conquered God's people without God's blessing? Not even the kings of Israel had power apart from what God gave to them. And when the kings of Israel turned away from God, they were cursed by him. Even the prince of this world, Satan, can do nothing without God's permission. The Lord is the king over the heavens and the earth. His rule over everything is infinite. He presides over every part of life. There's nothing that his eye is blind to. Nothing is outside of his control. And the truth that this psalm speaks over us today is that the king and ruler of everything, the sovereign over all, has steadfast love for us that endures forever. These first three verses serve as a preamble to the remainder of the psalm, and the, the psalm and its content is going to continue to highlight God's goodness, his godliness, and his kingship. So let's take a look at verses four through nine. To him alone who does great wonders, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who by understanding made the heavens, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who spread out the earth above the waters for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who made the great lights for his steadfast love endures forever. The sun to rule over the day for his steadfast love endures forever. The moon and the stars to rule over the night for his steadfast love endures forever. So there's an implied command to give thanks before each of the phrases throughout the psalm. 
And each verse is explaining why God's people should give thanks. And the evidence of God's steadfast love in verses four through nine is his mighty works in creation. He does great wonders. By understanding, he made the heavens. He spread out the earth above the waters. He made, this, he made the great lights, the sun, the moon, and the stars. Now, one difference between God and the idols of the nations is that God was not created. He has no beginning. He is the author and the creator of everything. But the idols of the nations are made from things that have been created, gold and silver. And they're made by hands of men that have also been created. And the question is, why would you worship something that has been made and not the one who has made them? In Romans 1, 24 through 25, Paul writes about God's wrath on the unrighteous, and he points out this very thing. And he says, therefore, God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. The unrighteous are given over to sin and death because they choose to exchange the truth about God. They reject his goodness, his godliness, and his kingship. And they worship worthless creatures rather than the one who deserves their worship. The psalm calls to us, don't be like the unrighteous, but recognize the greatness of God in everything that he has made. Do you see this morning and every day the honor and the praise that is due to God? And the psalm calls us, give thanks to him, praise him, worship him alone, for he alone is worthy. The one true God that created everything, the author, the one who speaks galaxies and universes into being, has love for you that endures forever. Give thanks to him and praise him. Let's look at verses 10 through 15. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, for his steadfast love endures forever, and brought Israel out from among them, for his steadfast love endures forever. With a strong hand and an outstretched arm, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea in two, for his steadfast love endures forever, and made Israel pass through the midst of it, for his steadfast love endures forever. But overthrew Pharaoh, in his host in the Red Sea, for his steadfast love endures forever. So Israel, in this worship song, remembers the steadfast love of God in the past, specifically here in verses 10 through 15 in the Exodus. God was faithful to deliver Israel, just as he promised he would to Abraham in Genesis 15. He showed his power both to Egypt and to Israel. To Egypt, he showed his justice and his judgment, and to Israel, he showed his grace and his power to save. He's faithful both to judge the wicked and to save those who fear him. So for Israel, remembering the steadfast love of God in the past was supposed to instill hope for his steadfast love for them in the present and the future. And then in verses 16 through 22, the psalm gives another example. To him who led his people through the wilderness, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who struck down great kings, for his steadfast love endures forever. And killed mighty kings, for his steadfast love endures forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, for his steadfast love endures forever. And Og, king of Bashan, for his steadfast love endures endures forever, and gave their land as a heritage for his, for his steadfast love endures forever, a heritage to Israel his servant, for his steadfast love endures forever. God delivered on his promise in the Exodus. Likewise, he delivered on his promise to give Israel the land of Canaan from Genesis chapter 15. 
He led his people through the wilderness. He struck down the great kings. He gave their land as a heritage, a heritage to Israel, his servant. How could Israel look back at the past and the faithfulness of God and his steadfast love for him? And how could they turn away? How could they doubt that he would not continue to be steadfast in his love for them? Believing that God's steadfast love endures forever is a process of observing how it endured in the past and applying it to our present situation and to our future. Has God kept his promises to his people in the past? Then God will keep his promises now and in the future, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let's look at verses 23 through 25. It is he who remembered us in our lowest state, for his steadfast love endures forever, and rescued us from our foes, for his steadfast love endures forever. He who gives food to all flesh, for his steadfast love endures forever. Now, the language shifts here in verse 23 through 25, and I don't know if you noticed it or not, but it shifts to personal plural pronouns. Rather than talking about Israel from the past, the congregation applies the steadfast love of God directly to themselves. He remembered us in our captivity, in our lowest state. He rescued us from our foes, and he gives food to all flesh. One theologian remarked on verse 25 that Psalm 136 puts the gift of daily food on the same plane as the great acts of creation, exodus, and conquest. And this is really interesting because maybe some of us are worried right now. Maybe we're afraid. Maybe we're anxious. Maybe we're worried about tomorrow, what we will eat, where we will work, when we'll be able to see our friends or gather at church again. Maybe we're afraid, are we going to contract the virus? Are we going to die? Or is someone we love going to die? If God gives food to all flesh, don't you think he will see to the smallest needs of your life if you only trust him? Israel had more than enough history to call on in remembering God's steadfast love for them. More recently than the exodus or delivering the promised land, the Lord remembered his people and brought them out of their captivity in Babylon. The people returned to Jerusalem and they rebuilt the temple, but the glory of Israel, when it was at its height, was lost. The temple did not have the same splendor that Solomon had built. Israel's whole identity was in question and they still were without a Davidic king. But God's greatest expression of his steadfast love was about to be revealed to them. God himself came to them, a baby born of a virgin. The Lord, in all of his goodness, in all of his godliness, in all of his kingship, came down and became a man. A man that walked rightly before God, fearing and honoring him obeying his law perfectly in order to become a sacrifice of love for all people. He was willingly hated, rejected, betrayed, beaten, and crucified by mankind whom he loves. His blood was shed. His body was broken. The punishment for the sins of man were placed on him so that by faith in him, we might be saved. The steadfast love of the Lord that endures forever is personified in Jesus. The steadfast love of the Lord that endures forever is personified in him who took on death so that we would be saved from it. So we don't have to be afraid of even sickness or death if we are in Christ. And God solidified our hope that his steadfast love would extend through all eternity, never ending, because he raised his son Jesus from the dead. How can we hope, or how can we not hope, even in the darkest times, if this is what God has already done for us, according to his steadfast love that endures forever? Amen?
I'm hoping that you guys agree. <laughs> Verse 26 closes, give thanks to the God of heaven for his steadfast love endures forever. I understand that it's, it's not easy to see. It's certainly not easy to understand or explain what God is doing in the world right now. And I don't believe that God expects us to have a complete understanding or even an explanation. But what I do believe is that God expects us to trust him completely because he has shown himself throughout history and will continue to reveal himself as completely faithful and that his steadfast love for us will never end. We can trust that the God who created everything is still creating and sovereign over his creation. He has not left us. He has not forgotten us. The God who delivered Israel is still, still delivering us and the world from sin and death. The God who always provides and has provided for his people in the past will continue to provide for those who fear him. We don't have to test God's love because it's already been proven throughout history. So will you trust it for your present and for your future? In my mind, the most horrific thing about this pandemic is not that people are dying. It's that some are dying without knowing, experiencing, and trusting in the enduring love of Jesus. This world was broken way before this pandemic started. But some of what this pandemic has exposed is the frailty of life and that each of us must reconcile with what comes after this life. God's steadfast love is yours in Christ today. If you would only take hold of it, if you would only receive it, embrace it, and trust in him completely. I want to close this morning with a quote from Corey Tinboom that I thought was really applicable both to this text and to our circumstances today. And she says this, often I have heard people say how good it is or how good God is. We prayed that it would not rain for our church picnic and look at the lovely weather. Yes, God is good when he sends good weather, but God was also good when he allowed my sister Betsy to starve to death before my eyes in a German concentration camp. I remember one occasion when I was very discouraged there. Everything around us was dark and there was darkness in my heart. I remember telling Betsy that I thought God had forgotten us. No, Corey, said Betsy. He has not forgotten us. Remember his word, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. Corey concludes, there is an ocean of God's love available. There is plenty for everyone. May God grant you never to doubt that victorious love whatever the circumstances. Let's pray. Father, we, we, I am overwhelmed by your steadfast love. God, my heart is weak. My faith wanes. My spirit doubts. And so, God, I need to know who you are. I need to remember who you are in the past and believe that you, you never change and that you will continue to be faithful in the future. Lord, strengthen me. Strengthen all of us in our hearts and in our spirits to trust and believe in your steadfast love. To embrace the love that you've given us in your son, Jesus. God, I pray that you will use this pandemic to break down the pride in the hearts of the people in this world, that they will consider eternity and that they will turn to you and they will find the thing their hearts have always yearned for, which is your love, which is a relationship with you that you have provided through your son. God, save the people in this world. Do a mighty work in the hearts of people, we pray. Let your word go forward. Let your church rise up. 
and be beacons of your love to this dying and sick world. God, give us hope in even the darkest of times that we would be able to say, just like Betsy said on her deathbed, that there's a, as far as the heavens are above the earth, so great is your steadfast love towards those who fear you. God, there's an ocean of your love available to us and available to everyone. God, grant us never to doubt in your victorious love, whatever our circumstances. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going we're gonna to close the service uh, with a song, which is going to serve as our benediction. I'm going to turn it over to Randy and his family. And then we're going to have some community connection time and get to see one another and talk to one another. So if you're on the Zoom call, please stay on the line. We'd love to see you. Everybody would like to connect together. Um, if you are viewing via some other platform, jump over to our Zoom call through the link that was provided both on Facebook and on, our, and on the Realm uh, so that we can see you. Um, we love you all. We miss you all. Um, and we're looking forward to the day where we can be reunited again. Thank you, Ryan, for that message. <clears throat> you and keep you make his face shine upon be gracious to you Lord turn his face toward you and give peace Amen favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing, He is for you, He is for you. May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations, and your family and your children and their children and their children. May His presence go before you and behind you. And beside you, all around you, and within you, he is with you, he is with you, in the morning, in the evening, in your coming, 
Yeah. 